I'm Sarah Burt from Melbourne, Australia, from The Age and AFL.com, and you're listening to A Yank on the Footy. Now in its third year, it's A Yank on the Footy with Craig Wessels talking about the greatest game on the face of the earth. Sit back and enjoy, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 154 of A Yank on the Footy. I'm Craig Wessels coming to you from Sandusky, Ohio, and thanks for giving this episode a listen. I'm absolutely thrilled that my guest is joining me today. I've been reading her work online for the last couple of years, and she really has her finger on the pulse of the AFLW. Just absolutely insightful work that she's done over the last couple of years to help to promote this game, to report on some of the different individuals and some of the personalities of this game and what they have to go through. I feel very fortunate to be able to get her booked on the podcast. Uh, it was a great discussion that we had today. We got to share her commute, uh, which was a lot of fun. So my guest this episode is Sarah Burt of The Age Newspaper and AFL.com. Now, listeners, if you are interested in having your local footy club get a shout-out during an upcoming episode, drop me a note via email, a yank on the footy at gmail.com, or send me a note on Facebook to a yank on the footy, or on Twitter at yank underscore, or on over on Instagram at a yank on the footy. And I'd love to be able to highlight your club during the course of your season. And I'm going back to my first club tonight. This is one that I uh, ran across today in the uh, clubs that I'm following on Instagram and went and read up a little bit on their website as well. But the club of this episode is the North Shore Jets. And the Jets were founded in 2009 on the Sunshine Coast in Mujimba. And I hope I've pronounced that correctly. I believe that I have. In their first year of 2009, they were able to field teams in all the junior age groups and have won several premierships. And now they have teams going all the way up through the men's seniors as well as women's clubs as well. In fact, the men's season for the seniors opens up on Friday in Kedron facing the Lions. And you can reach the club on Instagram, and I'll put the link there as well, or on their website, NorthShoreJets.com. And best of luck to all the Jets teams as they fly into 2022. I really love just exploring different clubs' websites and seeing just how the different clubs tick as I look through them on Instagram and then on their websites. It's just a, a fun little journey that I get to take there. Now, folks, you can find everything related to the podcast over at my website, yankonthefooty.com. I do hope you'll consider checking it out. You can leave me a voicemail. You can share your views on an issue from a previous round. Or if you've got a question for me, you can leave me a voicemail there as well. You can also sign up for the mailing list. And I do hope that you'll consider doing that because when new episodes come out, and when I'm getting ready to do live episodes, you'll get an email with a link to both of those things. When the new episode's out, you'll get that link within about 60 seconds of when that new episode is published. And the live episodes, I will generally get those sent to you at least 24 hours in advance to let you know when a live episode is going to be taking place. Because I'd love to have you tune in. You can also register as a guest there as well. So if you're a uh, footy fan who has a great, unique story, or if you know somebody, or if you have a retired player in your family, please pass along my information because I'd love to chat with them. I love exploring this game through the eyes of people who have grown up watching it and who have enjoyed it throughout their entire lifetime. I kind of feel like I get to live vicariously through them a little bit. You know, whether it be Damian Buttigieg and his uh, his trips to the MCG to watch the D's play when he was younger. Or, you know, Orville Gibson becoming a cat supporter because somebody had suggested it to him because they were working at the Geelong Cement Company. Or talking to reply, retired players like Donald McDonald. You know, it's just, it's been an absolute joy to have these conversations over the last two and a half years. And I, and I hope to get the chance to talk with you as well, or somebody who's important to you. So if you've got any of that kind of information, by all means, head over to my website, yankonthefooty.com, or shoot me an email at yankonthefooty at gmail.com, or any of my socials. If you look for Yank on the Footy, you'll find it. 
Now, if you'd like to help out the podcast, you can do that by clicking on the Buy Me a Coffee button in the bottom left-hand corner of my website. Or if you're interested in any of the podcast gear, I uh, had two students uh, show up in my classrooms today with uh, brand new uh, steel water bottles, which looked really good. I went and checked them out. Uh, and I also had a student uh, who had ordered one of my T-shirts with the new logo on it as well. And I have to tell you, the shirt looked pretty sharp as well. I've not even ordered one for myself yet, but uh, the one he was wearing looks really sharp. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, feel free to do so. It would be greatly appreciated, but you certainly don't have to do that. But it's there on my website. You can click on the store page up at the top, and uh, it will take you right to that. So let's go ahead and jump into my conversation with Sarah Burt. This was a lot of fun. Great insight on the AFLW and uh, such a positive person when it comes to women's footy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my guest this episode is a sports journalist writing for both The Age and AFL.com. I'd like to welcome Sarah Burt to the com to the podcast. I'll try that in English this time. Sarah, thanks for coming on this morning. Hi, Craig. Thanks so much for having me. This, is, uh, this has been a... a one we've been scheduling a couple of different times for a number of different reasons, and I'm glad that things are going in the right direction with what we just talked about off air. Uh, you know, I want to kind of start back at, at ground zero with you, but how did you know that you wanted to be a journalist? When did that bug hit you? Yeah, um, I always have loved writing. That's always been my creative outlet. Um, and um, so I've always, I've grown up knowing that I um, wanted to write in some capacity and uh, once I left school I decided to study communications and um, and I, I found myself in um, roles that I started at, um, at Surf Lifesaving Victoria um, because I'm a surf lifesaver being Australian based <laughs> and, um, and and then I ended up in a role um, very fortunately at Hawthorne Football Club um, in the media team and um, and I, I sort of found that um, although I really did enjoy all of the writing aspects of, of that job that I didn't have um, as much creativity that I could inject in those more sort of corporate writing um, capacities so I just started freelancing um, I was pitching stories to the paper for a long time before anything ever got picked up um <laughs> but that was sort of that was my um my journey um but yeah I've always always known that I wanted to write in some capacity okay do you remember your first story that got picked up first story that was published uh yes it was um it was about one of the um Melbourne AFLW players and her um, Aboriginal heritage um, and she grew up in the Kimberley region um, and in the Northern Territory and yeah it was um it that was I uh, just couldn't believe it was a double page spread had never been published before and I thought I was gonna have a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> yeah because I was I was wondering yes yeah, so how nervous when you were you when you hit the submit button it was like oh no I should have revised that last paragraph or I forgot, I forgot uh, this it's something I've, I've had to work on. I really tend to labor over things and then, but it gets to a point now I'm slowly starting to learn. You just can't, um, you can't just stare at it for too long. You mm -hmm. sort of have to start trusting your instinct, which I, I don't think I'll ever fully, um, <laughs> fully get over that, but that's the sort of self doubt that I suppose we all have a little bit of that in us, don't we? <laughs> oh, we, we, we certainly do. I mean, I, I have that with the, you know, with the podcast as well, because I, you know, some of the people that I've, I've had a chance to talk to, you know, uh, Kate Roffey and Ricky Nixon and uh, um, Donald McDonald, who played with North Melbourne and Frank Davis, who was a premiership player with Melbourne. I mean, I've I've been nervous talking with some of these people because I don't want to come off sounding like an idiot, quite frankly. Uh, you know, it's uh, but, you know, yeah, I'm looking at an article. It's an article that you uh, you wrote with Darian Trainer back in December, and it it just kind of resonated with me. And I've kept it on my desk here, you know, when I was thinking, you know, I do want to reach out to you and try to talk to you. And it's, you know, because a lot of the the work that you work on seems to be focused on the AFLW, if yes. I'm not mistaken. And it's you know, and I I I've I've enjoyed, I think I watched probably ninety percent of the games this season. 
there were a few I missed here and there, but I, you know, I watched almost every one. Um, but you wrote an article about the, you know, the balance between the, uh, the, the real world job, if you will, and the sports dream is probably not the right, you know, the, the professional athletics uh, that yeah. people are doing as well and the sacrifices that they make. And it just, you know, I don't know if, you know, if the, if the casual fan necessarily understands that because, you know, there's, you, know, you see time and time again, the, you know, the, the, the people have kind of dug in their heels, you know, old people like me who are, you know, footy purists <laughs> who are saying, well, it's not, it's not real footy yet. Cause you know, they're, you know, that there's just, you know, the, all the, the, uh, the birds chasing after the chip kind of a thing going on. And, 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 and I try to advocate for it here because I've watched the skills over the last couple of years improve tremendously. But the sacrifice that these women have made is is phenomenal to play this game. Oh, it is. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that um, I think has landed me um, to be writing mainly about AFLW. I do cover netball as well. Um, and I do, I've covered a little bit of cycling and I do, I do um, expand that repertoire. But the thing that really draws me to AFLW probably at its purest form is what was written in that article mm -hmm. with Darry um, and his photos that are so unbelievably powerful. Um, I, it, the commitment that these women have and all of the discussions that I am privileged to be able to have with these women about um, what they are willing to sacrifice in their own lives to make sure that the sport eventually becomes a full-time um career that it right, becomes right. an option for, for future generations to have it as their sole job mm -hmm. um that is what i just find so fascinating and the fact that um we are living in a time where we're seeing the whole competition come to fruition we're seeing the first generation now that the competition's been in its sixth year we're seeing the first generation of young girls who've been allowed to play footy the whole way through right right um, it's it's fascinating it's you know we don't we don't have that in the men's competition because it's been such a um well-trodden path mm -hmm. for so long yeah this yeah. it's I, I i think and and i've seen some other people address this but you know you know even with the addition of four new clubs next year i still think we're we're at a point right now where we're going to see some exponential growth of the game because as you said these 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 younger athletes who are coming through that have been playing the game all through their teen years who are going to be able to step from playing it you know that at the the local level and step right into a, a role at this level it's it's going to be phenomenal to watch and, and hopefully everybody gets on board with it because it's going to be i think that you know the, the competition is going to be fantastic it's oh yeah absolutely i i am right on board with you there i'm just so excited to see the growth that happens in the next couple of years um particularly in terms of um hopefully addressing some of the big issues that have become so clear particularly this season with the amount of athletes doing their acls and and, and all those sorts of things we're really starting to now see that there's opportunity for science to um, to research those sort of things and we can really try and, and get on top of them now that there's been a few seasons under our belts. Right, right. So, you know, I look at what happened this year and in some ways it mirrored what the, the men's comp went through, especially in 2020. But, you know, I, I, I've thought that, that quite frankly, that, that West Coast and Fremantle basically saved this season by coming yeah. to melbourne and you know because you know those players gave up their you know they they were some of them were going from their job to footy back to the job that sort of thing day in and day out they gave that up for well over a month to be able to keep the season going yeah it's interesting isn't it because it feels like now since the pandemic's kicked in that we're at the point now where it's not just the players who are sacrificing whilst they are giving the biggest sacrifice, arguably. Um, it's all of the staff around them. It's their families. It's their workplaces that I imagine um, would feel really wrong if they reprimanded them for having to leave for a month suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, it's, it's almost like the whole society is this you know, unspoken rule of we've got to support this competition. And 
hill, they put a structure around it um, for it to be sort of maintainable in this environment. Um, but yes, I would agree with you. I think they, um, those athletes and staff at those clubs just absolutely did keep it afloat because there were certainly times where I thought we weren't even going to get um, a, a final series or even a, a season at all. So, yeah. which, which would cause Fremantle to just throw their arms up in the air again and say, what do we got to do to try to play in a grand final here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're you're a journalist by trade so you you cover these games you're 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 at the grounds you know while the games are going on and that sort of thing but if you weren't doing that who would you go to pace who would you pay to see play in the aflw and in the afl yeah i i'm a carlson supporter um and always have been mm -hmm. um but um i i find it quite jarring because my favorite team in the AFLW has become Collingwood. Um, I, well, you, there's two You're going to have to fix that pretty soon, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's broken my heart. Um, Collingwood and Brisbane, um, I would say. I think okay. um, we've had a lot of opportunity to see Brisbane play at the pointy end mm -hmm. of the season. Um, Collingwood, I find fascinating because um, they seem to be able to overcome um, every hurdle that's thrown at them. Um, I think last weekend was a perfect example of um, their resilience. And while they didn't get the win in the end, they just seemed to be bouncing back. And I think that that is reflective of their culture. I really, I love talking to the Collingwood women. I love attending anything at, at their club for AFLW because they just, they have this real sense of, one day we're going to do it and and we're not going to stop until we do. So, and I think that's probably why, um, you know, we've, we've got athletes like Steph Kiyochi who possibly is um, teetering towards the end of her footy career. Mm -hmm. um, people like that who are just probably going to stick it out <laughs> until they get a flag. <laughs> well, I mean, you've seen, you know, you, you have, you know, Aaron Phillips, who's playing at, I believe, age 35 or 36, which, you know, on, mm. the, on the men's side, you know, we're in David Mundy territory there. You know, you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're, and, you know, it's, you're considered ancient there. And I, and I just have to say, I've said this in other episodes, but I have a hard time calling anybody old who's in their mid thirties because they're young enough to be my kids. You know, so it's, <laughs> I just have a really difficult time doing that, but, but it's reality when it comes to this. When it comes to sport, yes, yes. it's um, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's not old though. <laughs> so, you know, we've we've got kind of a unique situation here because some I, some different ideas have been tossed out with regards to the women's to the AFLW season possibly beginning in August of next of of this year. You know, so having just a, a very short turnaround before the next season starts. But then there was also a a piece that Libby Birch wrote where she was. Uh, in support of going ahead and aligning the the women's game with the men's game. Now, I don't mm. think that's necessarily a bad idea, but does that make you fearful of the women's comp getting lost in the shuffle at the outset if they were to do that? I mean, and I and I I'm hoping it wouldn't happen, but in reality, you're you have people who are, you know, who are footy fans who are going to you know have a finite amount of time to watch games and are they going to say uh yeah i'll go ahead and watch the women's game as well or are they just going to are they going to forget that it's even happening i mean that that's what scares me about it yeah i think i um thought that was a brilliant piece by lib and i think that um uh, one of two things could happen and i don't think we'll really know until um until it occurs the thing about the suggestion that will change this timing is firstly we'll have expansion mm -hmm. come in so no matter what timing the next season is we're going to have four new clubs right, in right. the competition we're going to have um full it's going to be buy-in from from every single men's club is going to have a women's team so that timing i think it makes sense to 
have them the changes happen at the same time because it means four less clubs that have to then readjust the next season. Um, my concern with the women's game, as you say, getting lost, is that um, the suggestion has been that if the game would start, the sorry, women's season would start in the bye week before the men's final series. And I think there is so much hype around the men's final series that I don't think there will be um, enough of a market for the first, I think it would be four games of, of the women's, mm -hmm. um, which then takes away that um, exciting build up. Um, and the other thing is, um, particularly with expansion coming in, people that already support a men's team that don't yet have a women's team, they're, it, they're no brainers to be supporters for the women's side once they get a team. True, true. But if if the me, they're focusing on the men's side, they won't have that hunger to be supporting their team because the men's team they've always supported is already playing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think it it will be it will be really difficult. But um, I mean, there's there's other issues. The women have had repeated conversations with the players association and the main thing that they have asked for is warning because as we spoke about they just don't they have to manage their whole lives around right, playing right. Team. and i think as a general consensus obviously i can't speak for them all but the few conversations i've had with players from other clubs is that they would prefer to be playing in the winter months because it's too hard. It's really hot here right, at this right. time. But they don't want it to happen this year because they just need warning because so mm -hmm. many of them have gone, you know, if you're a teacher, some of them have taken the first term off to play footy mm -hmm. and with the promise that they will then be there for the rest of the year. But now if it changes to August, they've got to go back and say, hey, I actually need term three and four off as well. Um so, you know, it's sort of jeopardising the rest of their lives, which, you know, Absolutely, is yeah. no fault of their own. And then you think about the poor girls that have done their ACLs. Well, now they'd be out for two seasons instead of just yes, the one. That's a good point. Um, and the Irish players who so many of them spend half their year in, in Ireland playing Gaelic footy or living mm -hmm. their lives there. And then they come here. But, you know, now they sort of just have to decide between their two worlds which was they didn't know when they flew over here in January so there's a lot to consider um but I I if you want my personal opinion I think that we should wait um to introduce it um okay. based based on those concerns um I think aligning it with the men's season is in general a good idea but they just need to give the athletes the, the warning that they right, need right. to get the rest of their lives sorted out so let me let me ask you this. You know, some of the 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 smaller grounds that you know, the, like the, the the home grounds, if you will, where the 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 clubs train, but then they play the AFLW games there. Do most of those grounds have lights? Mm, not because, all of them. Okay, because I was thinking, you know, even if they were still playing in the summer months, if they were playing night games at those parks with lights there. I mean, that, that would possibly be in a position where the temperatures could be dropping by maybe 8 to 10 degrees, you know, in the evening, which might make the games a little bit more palatable. I guess it's not the right word, but, you know, might make the games mm. a little bit more comfortable to play in. I don't know. Oh, sorry, Craig, I'm losing you. No, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I, no, I, this I'm, is what happens when you have Australia and America. Well, I'm 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 hearing you all right. So Hello. I'm you're still there. I'm gonna go ahead oh, and hit I've got you. You got me back? I've got you back. Okay, <laughs> Sorry. yeah. Well I was yeah, I was mentioning the lights because I didn't know if that would, you know, cause the uh you know the temperatures to drop by maybe eight or ten degrees in the evenings. Mm. Um, mm. which might make it a little bit easier to play if they were still playing in the summertime. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's a good point. And I suppose that the thing is, if we do go to a winter competition for the women, um, the timing, I mean, they're probably going to end up playing earlier in the day, possibly the mornings, um, okay. because, because I can't, I can't imagine that they would um, change the men's fixture um, to suit the women's. I think the women's competition would have 
scaffolding around the mains. As as nice as that would be for them to do that, <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not holding my breath on that one. Uh, Sorry, I don't. I, I, yeah, I I think that I don't know if that would happen. No. So so let me let me change it up here for you real quickly. You know, Victoria has had you know the last couple of years have been very interesting in terms of you know, oh that's. 5.1 kilometers from my house. That's too bad. Um, but <laughs> yes. you know, a lot of negatives came out of lockdowns, but did you have a positive that came out of the lockdowns? I think one thing that, um, that I have spoken with friends and family about is that um, people have seemed to relax a bit more since we've come out of lockdown. There wasn't many relaxed people while we were in the lockdowns, um, but with things like work um mm -hmm. i think it's really essentially just put things into perspective um and it's made a lot of people realize particularly for myself working in the sports industry um your job can be taken away pretty quickly and it was um and you know for everyone across the world experienced it in some form with the right, pandemic right. um i think it really just put things into perspective that um you know the one thing that we all missed, as you say, when we couldn't go five kilometers from our house yes. was seeing our family, you know, mm -hmm. my family days away. So I didn't see them for months, even though we live in the same city. So um, that was the one thing that we all missed. And that's, that's number one. That's the most important thing, which sounds so corny, but um, it definitely put things into perspective. Okay. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to, you're going to change jobs here for just a moment with this question. So sure. in the in the near future, you get the opportunity to be the, you get to take the role of Gil McLaughlin and Nicole Livingstone for a day. Mm, what's okay. the what's the what's the first thing that you do in your new position? I pay the women at least three times what they're getting. <laughs> okay, well, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, at that's, least because that that would because that would still not be you know. And this is just basically say that they're that that what they're being paid right now is 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 much lower than it should be. But that that would still not make a significantly large dent, I think, in the overall capital structure of of the game. That's a great, that's a great. I didn't even thought about that, but that's a great point. No, it, it, yeah, it's. I just I can't understand. Like if there the figures are out there online, people can read mm -hmm. them, and they're <laughs> pretty bad, pretty dire. Well, I, and I did see that there, you know, um, there are some female coaches who are going to be hired on in full-time capacities to try to bring more women into coaching. And it's going to be outside of the salary cap structure for the clubs, which I think is, a, you know, great to exempt that yeah. to ensure that this is happening. Great move. Yep. I agree with you. That's, that's a fantastic first step. You know, everything's not going to happen all at once. We need to be realistic about it, but I agree with you. That's it's a great step. Now, we're we're two we're two rounds into the men's comp right now, and uh, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that this is not what you thought the ladder was going to be looking like. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it looks it looks like an episode of Stranger Things right now, uh, quite <laughs> frankly. But um, who do you think is going to be in the top four once the season ends? Oh my gosh, that's. <laughs> Look, I have, I have to put it on record again that I'm a mad Carlton supporter. So I've been pretty happy um, with the last two weeks. And mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen any success, really, from Carlton in my lifetime, to be honest. So well, um, I've, been, yeah. I've been pretty, pretty happy. Um, I actually, I really, I'm biased. I know that. But I actually think that Carlton could be up there. I think this could be their year. Okay. Um, in terms of the other three, um, you don't I care, think, right? Well, who cares? <laughs> no, that, since matter. Carlton's there, you don't care about the other three. <laughs> You're just leaving everyone else in our shadow. <laughs> um, I think I do think Richmond um, will still be up there. Um, they haven't had a great a great start, but I do I do think that they've got real depth. Um, and I think that that's what it's going to come down to because um, it's what it's come down to in the women's game, in my opinion, um, because people are going to be in and out with COVID and, mm -hmm. and injuries and all those sort of things. Um, it's it's going to be whoever has the depth in their structures. 
Um, and so I think that um, we might see we might see some teams that we haven't seen um, have success in recent times. Hopefully that means Richmond step aside and let someone else have a turn. There you um, go. Like Carlton. <laughs> yeah, that you know, and I, I, and I do have, I have just the slightest of grudges with regards to Carlton, though. You know, I'm, I came oh. to the game so late in life that I don't have in my DNA that you know I'm supposed to hate a club because, that because I support <laughs> this club, but I do have just a slight grudge with with Carlton, and it happened actually last year, uh, and I've mentioned this in other episodes, but I, I was actually supposed to be on an episode of the Sporting Capital. They were going to have me on to talk about the podcast. And I was up at like four o'clock in the morning to, to do the interview. And I checked my email. Well, that happened to be the Thursday before the grand final when they hired Michael Voss. So I got bumped from, I got bumped from the show so they could talk about Carlton's <laughs> new coach. So I, 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 I kind of have this little micro grudge against Carlton. So. It's <laughs> oh no. And then, we do love yeah, Bossy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then yeah, and he's doing a good he's doing a good job so far. But then I went to you know, because the producer said, Well, yeah, we want to get you on some other time. So about three weeks ago, I reached out to send him an email and he's no longer with he's no longer at the station. So uh, no. <laughs> and oh, oh well honest the amount of coaches, like it's a revolving door with coaches changing at the moment in the AFL world. So um we just need them to all stop stop switching around well, yeah. and then there'll be fresh air for you to get in there well it's, it's kind of funny because I, I i actually mentioned this to somebody the other day that you know with the way hawthorne has played in their first couple rounds is that i think that you know clarko's old club is going to go around the way it's looking now go around the comp this year and try to help put him into position to take jobs from other clubs by going ahead and beating them <laughs> yes so, yes so you know, one I because I know you know you're you're heading into work right now, but I've got one other you know question here for you before we wrap up. And one of the things that I do like to to ask on the podcast, especially with people who are are in Australia, um, what to, what's something you know to try to encourage Americans to check out Australian football? Why should they give this game a shot? Because I think it's the greatest game on the planet. But why should they give it a shot? Well, again, I'm biased, but um, I think that I grew up liking AFL, but I was never, I was never this mad about it. And the mm -hmm. thing that has really sold me to the women's side of it is, as we've discussed, the stories behind behind the athletes. Um, again, I'm <laughs> primarily a feature writer, so um, I'm biased, but just once you know the background and the sacrifices that these athletes have to make just to make it to game mm -hmm. day and right. just to run out on the field it just makes it makes the entire thing mesmerizing because you just can't believe that Daisy Pierce is out there you know a few months after having twins or yeah. that you know someone's been on night shift as an ambulance during the pandemic and then is rushing to the game like mm -hmm. it's just the amount of commitment it just it's it's a whole new level so yeah. i i would urge people to to do their research on the humanity um and the humans behind the game um mm -hmm. and then watch it because it's pretty remarkable yeah i i've i've said i've said on the record i think i think jess wushner is the toughest person on the planet Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, with, the, with, you know, with, with her other profession and what happened to her at work and playing this game. I, I don't think oh. there's, a, I don't think there's a tougher person out there. No, I would agree. Yeah. Would it's, agree. it's amazing. It's amazing. So where can people find your work? Uh, well, I do have a website. Um, uh, I, I'll, I'll shoot you the link. Um, I don't know what it is off by heart, um, but I, yeah. I already have it, but uh <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> can i help you out might it might it be uh well it's actually it's your writing portfolio it's uh clippings.me correct yeah and i will yes. put a link to that in the show notes beautiful thank you um but otherwise um on on the age australia um is where most of my most of my work pops up but also on um afl.com okay fantastic well sarah i want to thank you for taking time out of your commute this morning and uh 
hopefully hopefully our discussion made your car a little bit more aerodynamic with the gas prices in australia right now uh, <laughs> Hopefully, yes. <laughs> hopefully you, you saved a few drops of, of, of gas on your on your way into work. But thanks for taking time out of your morning. I appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. Oh, it's been great. Thank you so much for having me, Craig. It's um never felt like such a short, easy commute. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds that's great. I'm I'm glad that was I'm glad that we were able to make that happen. <laughs> All right. My guest has been Sarah Burt from the age and from AFL.com. Sarah again, thanks so very much for taking time out of your morning. Oh, thank you, Craig. And absolutely a huge thank you to Sarah Burt for sharing her commute with us to chat footy. Just a, a delightful conversation. A very nice young lady. I, I'm glad to have had the opportunity to talk with her. And I, and I cannot thank her enough for, uh, for sharing her, her time with us today. Now, don't forget that you can reach me by email at a yank on the footy at gmail.com as well as on twitter at yank underscore on and on facebook and instagram just search for a yank on the footy and again if you haven't done so yet i do hope you'll head over to my website a yank on the footy.com and get signed up on the mailing list so you'll get those episodes as soon as they come out and when the live episode is getting ready to happen you'll have a link to that as well now everybody i want to thank you for listening we are two rounds in round three is going to be starting as soon as I go to bed here tonight. And uh, it's been an exciting two rounds. And I think we've seen the unexpected happen quite a few times already. And uh, I, I think we're probably going to see more of that. One of the things that the NFL tries to do is that they try to work towards what they call parity. Where every club has you know, an equal shot at putting together a, a team that's able to compete for the Super Bowl. Now, of course, if you find yourself a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning or a Patrick Mahomes, that usually helps to do that sort of thing, or an Aaron Rodgers or somebody of that nature. That usually helps to get you to that Super Bowl. Uh, not always to win it, but it certainly helps to get you there. So some clubs, if they can go ahead and hang on to their quarterback, they can have them there for a long time and have a lot of success. So, folks, we're fans of our clubs. I know that you're a fan of, you know, of the club that you love. I'm, I'm, I'm a big cat supporter. This is, uh, this is a labor of love for me, and I, I just really enjoy sharing the thoughts of other people and my thoughts from time to time as well. Uh, if you're enjoying this show, I do hope that you'll consider sharing a link with your friends and family. Tell them about. Uh, this American that's uh, doing this footy podcast, it would be a huge help to the show. Get some more growth out there. And if you've got a favorite episode, you can go ahead and share that as well. And folks, I cannot, cannot thank you again enough for the kind words that you have given me. I just received uh, uh, an instant message on Facebook tonight from a gentleman uh, who reached out to pay a very kind compliment about the show. I can't thank him enough. You know, it, it truly means the world to me because I, I'm, I'm trying to learn from you, and I'm glad that so many of you have come along for the journey. Now, there's still there's plenty of room on this journey for other people. But uh, those of you who have, have been here for a while or those of you who have just come on board, thank you so very much. I truly, truly appreciate it. And, folks, as always, may your dribble kick never hit the post. I will catch you later. <laughs> This has been episode 154 of A Yank on the Footy, my discussion with Sarah Burt. And don't forget that you can reach me at yank underscore on on Twitter or to yank on the footy at gmail.com and on Instagram and Facebook at a yank on the footy. And please check out the website at yank on the footy.com. Get on that mailing list, folks. I hope you'll share this episode with your friends and family, especially if you are a fan of the AFLW, because you have one heck of an advocate for that comp in Sarah Burt. I don't think you can have a better advocate than her. Ladies and gents, until next time, this is Craig Wessels, and goodbye. <laughs>